Hey guys, it's Christina of Crafty Plus. I wanted to come on and share a paper bag card that I made for Teresa Rankin. She's having her first 300 Zuffy giveaway challenge, and I decided I was going to combine that with my entry into the Not Too Shabby Shop or Scrap and Stampers Jamie's paper bag card challenge this month on Facebook. And I will put a link to both Teresa's challenge video, which was extended. Her challenge was extended to May 20th, thank goodness, and also to Jamie's Facebook group so that you can play along if you like. I was really excited to finally color up again the Saturated Canary image called Little Loves. She's such a cutie. And I'm going to attach to this video a coloring video sharing with you guys my coloring of her face and her hair. And I use very standard colors for the hair, but for her skin, I actually tried my hand at including a blue violet, a BV01 color, to get in some kind of purple undertones, which I think gives a really nice, almost more realistic in a way, shading for the shaded areas of her skin. I'll tell you real quick about the card itself. The structure, I followed a tutorial that I had learned ways back from Jamie, and I used some beautiful papers that were gifted to me by Bev, New Crafter Bev, and I used some of the new doilies, the little flower doilies, crocheted ones that were gifted to me by Pat S., and this little blingy flower piece that has such a nice sparkle to it. That was from V, who's Virginia 1468. And I used some bling pieces from Crafty Mommy Prissy. And, oh, and these die cuts right here, which I think are so pretty. And the gold, I thought, went well with the paper bag. That's a gold color. Um, this was gifted to me by Carmen, who's Makes Nana 2012. I tied this little bow with this snippet of green crochet trim, and I used the leaf pattern in the crochet trim to cut along to make the tails of the bow. Back here, I used a paper doily that was gifted to me, I think also by Carmen, I could be wrong. And then these two pieces here, the colored image piece and this background piece, which I also used to paper piece her little dress there, her little tank top dress um, is from this Spellbinders set that I had picked up a Tuesday morning. Let me show you the inside. I have attached the lace closure underneath the papers so it's really secure. I hot glued those in and then inside I have this so there's a pocket for goodies here and a pocket for goodies here um, so there will be some little surprises for Teresa. So in this color combination, I'm using E colors that have a rosy undertone. I usually lay down a base coat of the lightest color, and in this case that's E000, and then I go along the hairline and along the chin, along the sides, the underside of the hands there with the next darkest color, which is E00. Then I go over that again with a slightly darker color to really try to lay in the next shadows, which I do with E11. I figure the light source is kind of in front of this little girl and from the top, so that's why I'm picking the underside of her hands and arms and along the edges by her hair for the darker shades. This last shade is E13, and inside I'm going to put in that little shadow for the bridge of her nose with this E13. I'll soften around it as I start blending back the colors, going back from light to dark, dark to light. <laughs> I don't want there to be any harsh lines, so here you see me going back in with the E11. I'm just trying to soften up the lines and the shadows, making sure that they're blending. And that is with E00. And you can see that because I'm laying down another layer of color, even though it's a light color, 
more particles of ink are being set down, so her skin color is getting darker even with a light shade. And you'll see this again as I go over everything with E000 in a second. Even though, again, that color is super pale, it's called pale fruit pink, just laying down the extra layer of color will make even the palest areas a little bit darker. So if you ever want something to be totally highlighted, you want to avoid laying down any color, even a base color. Here I'm adding the BB01. And this purple undertone you would think would look really unnatural, but in fact, that blue-violet color adds an even more natural look to her skin. I do go back over that BV01 with E000 and E00 right over top so that the skin color, the kind of peachier color, is the most visible, the last layer added on top there. And I think next you're gonna see me lay down one last layer of E000, yeah. And you'll see that even though it's a really pale shade, just laying down that extra layer of particles brings the color of her skin tone a little bit darker. For her blush, I'm using R20, which is a little bit pinker, darker than my normal R30 for yellow undertone skin. I wanted to give her dark kind of ruby red lips, so I used R85 and R89. I wanted to show you a quick comparison of different skin color combinations. The little fairy on the left has a yellow undertone, while the little girl has a rosier, kind of darker undertone. This hair color combination is pretty typical. It's E55 for the lightest, to E57 to a mid-range, and an E59 for the darkest brown. And I always start by laying in the lightest color where I think the light would be hitting the most, kind of the bumps of the hair, the highlights, the high points of the hair. And I do usually leave an area of the paper just exposed, so you'll see white areas that I leave just to accentuate the white light hitting her hair. Now for the mid-tone, I try to think about where the shadow from her arm would be on her hair and where kind of the back part of her hair would be under her face, behind her shoulder, and also again, taking into, trying to take into account where the light would hit the waves of her hair. Now remember, I'm also still reserving the darkest shade, so some of those areas that I haven't colored in are gonna get the darkest E59. I'm sorry my hand is covering up where I'm coloring, but you'll get the point when you <laughs> see it there. The darkest shades, again, I'm going over uh, with the E57 and then later on with the E59. And where her hair is bunched together, where it's tighter, like right there, you'll see the darker colors versus where the hair is kind of bumped out, where you'll see the lightest colors. And I just try to keep the strokes very light and on the tips. And you'll notice also that I take the cap off of both ends of my markers because I don't want accidentally there to be globs of ink coming out. And I find that the pens equalize, the pressure seems to equalize better when I keep the pen caps off of both sides when I'm coloring. And where her part is, kind of I would imagine that would be a dark, a, inset part of her head or hair, so you'll see that the darker colors are going to go in those inset areas. And here I'm finally going in with the darkest E59 walnut for the darkest parts of her hair.
this point I'm pretty pleased with the highlights and the low lights but I do want to kind of bridge the gap in the widest areas so I do use the E55 again just to take a little bit of that harshness away from the white areas so here she is all colored up I really like how this came out. I haven't done a paper bag card in a long time. So this was fun to do again. Thank you, Jamie, for inspiring that. And thank you, Teresa, for a wonderful challenge. I hope you like this and that you'll keep it on your shelf along with your other crafty decorations. Thanks for watching, everybody.